Hayes is as into it and as committed as they come. You don't get that good. No, no, no. Great defensively without having that type of mindset. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins that I hope you'll also check out. After a week in Bradenton, I came away with the distinct impression of a baseball clubhouse that knows and understands where it is in addition to where it believes it'll be. No one in my experience has spoken better to that than Hayes. And our conversation that he and I had at his stall a couple of days ago was yet another example of that. Here's a sampling of it. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of a lot of the guys I've like I've gotten pretty familiar with, like I've seen on um, Cal Mitchell, uh, <laughs> Kanan Smith. Uh, I mean, there's Frazier. endless names yeah. uh, mm-hmm. uh, down there, and um, just now it's this is a lot of their first big league camp, and um, I remember being in their shoes. So for me, um, even this year, like our team's super young, and. Um, I mean, I've been through, like, the big league spring training process, like, three times now. and um, So just trying to help those younger guys feel comfortable. This isn't forced or phony. This is something that he's spoken to me on multiple occasions. And he's done so not just with a passion, but also with a precision. He'll name names. And he'll discuss specific experiences that he's had with some of the younger players who are still in the minors. Matt Fraser, who's one of those top prospects, told me himself that when Hayes has spent time, including rehab stints and so forth, with those prospects, that he's shared the message with them that they're going to be a part of this in the future, that they all are going to end up playing together at PNC Park someday. That was a neat thing to hear. It really was. Now, I'm sure it would be neater for everyone listening to this program to hear that Hayes himself will be part of that future. And I believe that he will, but there are some obstacles. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern, That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Let me start with this. The Pirates have not approached Hayes about an extension this offseason. They've done that before, and it didn't get too far, even though the Hayes camp is amenable to the concept. This year, it wasn't even put forth. No approach from the team according to a source with direct knowledge of the matter. And why might that be? Well, one obvious reason is the lockout. There was no contact permitted of any kind between teams and players. But the other, and this is something that I heard down there from another, uh, meaning a different source, and that's that the Pirates want to wait and see a little bit. They want to be a little bit more sure about Hayes. For one, and this is completely understandable, he's coming off a wrist injury that pretty much took away his ability to pull the ball. And when Hayes was absolutely destroying the ball in the abbreviated 2020 season for the one month that he was up, 
a lot of that was being done to left field. He was just killing it. And the same goes for spring training of 2021. And then, of course, that first at bat at Wrigley Field in the opener. And you're thinking to yourself, this is just some truly special talent. But then, with the wrist, he wasn't hitting the ball in that direction. Everything, everything, everything started going oppo. And it was being done with one hand, which, by the way, would only make things worse on the wrist. So he then went into this past offseason telling himself that he needs to stop doing that. He needs to get back to taking two-handed swings, not only to pull the ball again, but also to protect the wrist. In the other one, I'm trying to think of a good way to say this here. The Pirates want to know. They want to know, according to this source, that this is a player who wants to be out there every day. That's going to sound like a shot or a criticism or whatever, and it isn't. It's just part of the natural evaluation that every team has of every player who is a projected starter. You want to know that that player is going to say, there's no way you're taking me out of this lineup. I don't care if I hurt this or that or something else last night, and it's a Sunday day game. I'm in there. I'm available. The Pirates have seen that from Brian Reynolds. The Pirates have seen that from guys like Adam Frazier, Kevin Newman. And going back, they saw it in guys like Andrew McCutcheon. And when you do, when you have that evidence, when you have the field manager and the teammates and everybody saying, wow, this guy is just giving it everything that he's got, including when things aren't going well, whether that's mentally or physically, we now feel a heck of a lot better sitting down and discussing what, for a low-revenue franchise, is a massive, can't-miss investment. It's one thing for people like me and you to wag our finger at the Pirates and say you need to spend more money or whatever, but we would also all agree that when they do spend that money, they got to nail it. So I'll reiterate that there isn't any sort of disenchantment from everything I've heard uh, or even skepticism or doubt. They just want to see it. They want to see Hayes overcome the adversity, be the player that he was, and push like crazy to be that player every day. When we come back, just one question. Today's J1Q comes from Adam Gravenstein, who asks, Dan, do you think that Kevin Newman can regain his good 2019 self of a 308 average? Um, in a nutshell, no. However, however, there are things to add to this storyline, again, based on my week down in Bradenton, and foremost, among them is that Newman has completely revamped his batting stance. He's more upright. He's trying to stay back on the ball and deliver harder, more authoritative swings as opposed to, you know, everything that you saw through last season and even the abbreviated 2020 season where he had quite possibly the softest contact of any everyday player in the majors. You can poke hits here or there, and he does have very good speed, but ultimately soft contact is going to bury you. It just is. You've got to put the ball in play like you mean it. So Newman's gone through this process. It's different. 
uh, when you watch him, and I watched a round of his live BP the day before yesterday, uh, it's it's almost uncomfortable because he doesn't even look like Kevin Newman up there. But he feels good enough about it that he first heeded Derek Shelton's admonition to do things differently, and that did come directly from Shelton, the former hitting coach. And then he went through the process in the offseason, again, having to work without feedback or input from the team because of the lockout. But then he was in the fold in Bradenton early, showed everyone what it is. Shelton got his first in-person look at it in the same session that I was describing that I watched myself, had some kind things to say about it. And you know what? He can talk about it. Newman can talk about it. I can talk about it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He's got to hit the ball hard. It's not any more complicated for this individual than that. If he does, and by the way, in 2019, when he had not just the the good batting average, but all kinds of positive metrics, even a little bit of pop, he was super consistent for a period of about four months. The first two months weren't all that great. He started to pick it up in May of that year. But then he just went on a roll where he was every bit the same hitter as Brian Reynolds was that year. We forget that. They were virtual clones statistically through their shared rookie year. Now, if Newman can get back to that, yeah, I mean, that would make a pretty big difference, even if only from the standpoint of raising his trade value, presuming that the Pirates would rather see somebody else, whether it's O'Neill Cruz or Cole Tucker, or even clearing space for down the road for Leo Verpaguero. Newman's not going to be your long-term anything in Pittsburgh, but you can get something for him if he can hit. If he's got the softest contact of any everyday player in baseball, then not so much. So am I optimistic about this? Wow, no. How can you be? We've watched him now for two years do next to nothing at the plate. But I'll at least commend him for having you know recognized that and instead of stubbornly standing Behind it, saying, this was what worked for me in 2019. He's trying something that is completely new. By the way, I I need to make that part emphasized here. This isn't him trying to get back to what he was doing in 2019, stance-wise. This is a whole new thing. And it will be interesting. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates all week that came your way from Florida. And we will do another one of these on Monday. (laughs) 